name is Phil Barney. Uh, I am a UVU fan of 12 years, a UVU student of, jeez, oh, everything. My first, fall, my first semester was fall 2009. Old. Went after one semester to serve a two-year mission for the LDS Church. Came back March 24th, 2012, so it's almost my birthday. And, or my back day. And I've been here ever since. I've had the great opportunity to be involved in a myriad of different clubs, organizations. I uh, served as the president of our German club. I was in the Center for the Investment of Leadership. I was in an ambassador program for two years where I was able to do out-of-state recruitment and ambassadoring. I managed uh, branding for the organization for a year. I was, uh, I had my favorite opportunity in there to be a campus tour guide. Uh, probably the thing I miss the most about it. It's absolutely wonderful. Uh, and many, many other things. Uh, to start off, though, with my way of introduction, I want to talk to you all about why I first came here. Uh, I am a closet arts freak, a nerd, as it were, uh, especially with the theater. Fifteen years of my life, I was very involved in performing arts, especially in theater. It has shaped a huge portion of my life, including the way I act, the way I speak, the way I walk, the way I'm so dramatic all the time, and many, many other things. When I went to college, I, I felt that the only way that I could really make an impact on my future in my life was through the arts. And so I looked very closely at different arts programs across uh, across the, the state. And uh, I came to UVU knowing the, the names of the directors because they are all very infamous. Uh, the theater professors here are very strong reputation across the stadium and across the nation. And I came to a show called Chess. Has anyone ever heard of the musical Chess before? Cody, you have. What's Chess about, Cody? I actually don't know. Okay, but you've heard of it. Does anyone know the song One Night in Bangkok? One Night in Bangkok makes a hard man humble. That actually originated from that musical, interestingly enough. And I saw that, and I was absolutely blown away. Performances were spectacular. The theme was amazing. The show was very beautiful. But just the fact that it, it blew me away, I was just like, this is where I need to go. So I came here, and I had the great opportunity and honor to uh, be put in as a freshman on a main stage play. And that's something that UVU Theater prides itself on, is that we do allow uh, any student, regardless of their age, to come in and be on main stage shows. Uh, and so that's a little tidbit of information for you guys. And so uh, I have these little things for you as I was digging through my various scrapbooks. I have the program of this set of play. Now, I'm going to warn you, the title is absolutely terrible. It was on Broadway for a year, and I actually had to leave because the title was so bad that no one bought tickets. The name of that play is Urinetown. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's actually an amazing piece. It's, it's a farce. It's a satire of politics uh, and the mix between capitalism and socialism. But no matter what it is we choose or what we do, we're all screwed in the end because we're all going to die. Now, it's, it's based off the philosophies of a philosopher named Thomas Malthus, uh, who's around the industrial era. But it is absolutely a joy. It's, it's a comedic piece. I loved it. Uh, due to the, the infamy of the school itself, we were able to bring it to the Utah Theater Association as one of their main stage pieces and, and perform there. I'll just pass out the program for you guys if you'd like to look through it. Again, I apologize for the title. It is awful. And I also have this as I was looking through it, actually, if you guys want to look at this. This is uh, uh, from the UVU Review in January of 2010. And that's me, right there. That's a little sophomore Phil, or freshman Phil, uh, just coming in, uh, getting ready to leave on his mission. You guys can go ahead and look at that. So uh, as I speak today, I just wanted to, uh, to let you all know that I'm speaking as a, as a student, uh, as a fellow fan of this school. Uh, as a student leader, I have the, the great opportunity to, to have a leadership role on campus right now. I'll bring that up in a little bit. But uh, just so that you guys all know, I do love this school. And any good that has come into my life in the past few years, especially in my personal development, has come from this school. Everything I'm about to talk to you today uh, has come from this school and what it has taught me. So, the theme itself. Now, I. Uh, I was at the Science Conference two years ago. I was able to present this. Uh, I did it as a, as a first year student in the Cal Center of the U.S. for Leadership. And I did it with my good friend, uh, uh, 
uh, who unfortunately couldn't be here today. But we were looking at what it is we wanted to talk about. We were much younger students back then, and we thought, what is it that we can share as younger students? Uh, what is it that we can bring to the table? And we thought about um, this quote here from Anne Frank. The quote is, everyone had, oh, and I, and I do apologize, I know the worst PowerPoints are the ones with a ton of text, so I'm just, this is most text you're going to see in this presentation here. Uh, but I do really like this quote. It says that everyone has inside of him or her a piece of good news. The good news is that you don't know how great you can be, how much you can love, what you can accomplish, and what your potential is. And it's very, very true. Uh, the good news is that we are completely ignorant to the good in our lives, and that it's there. Uh, sometimes, in fact, I know for certain, we all feel that there are moments in our time, in our lives, our lives as students, where we do feel kind of stuck. That we're sort of in a dead end with our attention on it. There's nowhere else we can go. But the good news is, it's not true. There's more to it. And this is the extra credit that I want to talk to you about today. But before we do, I want to talk to you about a, a personal hero of mine, a celebrity, as it were. Now, many of you are going to ask, why did I put a picture of a younger Kurt Cobain uh, on the screen? <laughs> It's not Kurt Cobain, actually. That is my good friend and, and former co-presenter, Mr. Charles Banks. Uh, for those of you who know Charlie, I'll go, I'll go back to that picture. So I'm going to introduce you. <laughs> I'll introduce you to Charlie a bit here. Uh, this is Charlie, circa 2007. Uh, he was a student, a high school student, and uh, his life was not exactly where it needed to be. Uh, not only was he struggling in school, but he was having substance abuse issues. Uh, he was having, uh, obviously, issues connected with that, uh, depression, sort of lack of motivation, things like that. And uh, with, uh, without going too much into detail, he just basically came to a point in his life where he knew that he needed a change. Uh, he you know, didn't know exactly what it was at the time, but through a couple of very important acts in his life, he was able to progress and grow, and eventually grow, this guy right here, who I am proud to say I consider one of my greatest friends, one of my greatest mentors here. Uh, he is now working here at the school. He's a presidential intern for Mr. Kyle Reyes. For if you know, he is one of the geniuses who's gotten the school to where it is. Uh, he last year was the vice president of current students in the Center for Investment Leadership. Uh, and he has also served uh, many leadership position roles. He uh, became good friends uh, as out-of-state recruitment ambassadors moving across uh, just in parts of the Western United States recruiting for the school, and I, I got to know him very well. Uh, I want to introduce you to another person, and this is Philip. Uh, also circa, also circa 2007. Actually, if you'll notice, ironically enough, me and Charlie are making the same face in these pictures. Um, this is obviously way, way before we knew each other, but this was, uh, this was me. During my uh, sophomore, sophomore, junior year of high school, very similar, although not as uh, intense as Charlie's, in that I did kind of self-identify as a not concerned student. I didn't really care. I didn't really want to care. I was very comfortable with mediocrity. I talked about uh, my time in the arts, and really that was kind of the only thing that gave my life meaning and purpose. It all was my ability to to perform and. and if that wasn't, if, if it wasn't performance, if it wasn't theater, I didn't care. And that included school, and that included uh, any extracurriculars, anything like that. And I don't consider myself now to be an absolutely amazing person, but I am proud to say that I have transformed out of that and actually started to care. And so this is me now, second, I'm in the pink. Um, that wasn't my decision. Uh, that was sort of voted on by the group that I would be pink, but I actually came to love them a lot. Um, this is one of the proudest moments of my life so far was when I got to run, excuse me, when I got to run and was elected to be the executive vice president of uh, the student, student government here at UVU uh, with these four wonderful, wonderful individuals. Uh, mine and Charlie's stories are not unlike each other's, but it really just goes down to the fact that uh, we had to make a choice. We had to figure out that good news we had to take advantage of the yeah, extra credit. Uh, so going back to our former selves, we were very much the average uh, in that we considered ourselves average. We didn't want to be special. I want to show you a couple pictures that I also describe as 
average. Look through these. These were all pictures that I have found on Facebook walls. These aren't pictures that I searched for on the internet. These weren't Googled. These were things that I saw uh, friends, associates, coworkers, fellow students post. And I'm sure we've all seen them before, right? I'm sure many times we've posted them. I know I have. Uh, and if anything, and many times we do tend to agree with these things. However, we shouldn't. We really, really shouldn't. Because this is the average. This is the ignorance that's stopping us from reaching that extra credit that I talked about. Especially that one in the middle. I hate that. It is so self-defeating. It is so... I mean, it looks like a graph. It looks like a chart. So obviously we want to think that it's true. But how unfair is that? That we are putting ourselves in this bubble here. When I talk to people about these certain points of extra credit that I'm going to bring up, uh, there's always a... It, it, it's a, it's a two-word response. Uh, for the most part. It's like, you can't. Hey, you should get an extra hour of sleep. I can't. Hey, uh, there's a club event going on. You should totally check it out. I can't. Now, that's not to say that we're not busy people and that we don't have uh, something that we need to get done. But why is it that we have to use the word can't, which by connection means the inability to, to do something? Why are we telling ourselves, no, it is absolutely possible for you do this to be able to perform this. It's very self-defeating. You know what, in the honest, the honest truth to all of this, the end is that yes, you can. You can. You can do these things, guys. Uh, even if you might not be able to at the time, even if it's uh, something you feel like you shouldn't do, or if you're prioritizing, you prioritize something different, don't ever say you can't. Because when I say for you, you should probably get an extra hour of sleep, don't confine yourself to thinking that you are robbed of the inability to, to help yourself, to treat yourself better. And that's just one example. We'll, we'll continue on more as we go through these. Um, what I wanted to do now, uh, so this next slide is basically going to be a summary of my last, my last uh, time I presented this. And there were these three points, and, and I, me and Charlie, we, we looked at like different points of a student's life and mindset, and, and a lifestyle, and uh, we thought about what, uh, or so for the second and third combined. We thought about what it is that we wanted to, to promote, and we thought about these three. And so I just want to take some time to talk about these really, really quickly because there's, there's definitely more to this that I wanted to dive into. Uh, sleep. Why is, I mean, we are, we are all very smart individuals. Why is sleep in a student's life, biologically, psychologically, socially, so important? There are any anatomy majors right now? I'm not an anatomy major, but um, I do believe that if you're lacking in sleep, then the other areas of your life are lacking as well. It's very true. It's very, very true. Uh, who, who knows what a GPA is? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, Come up with me, I will show you. What is a GPA measure, guys? It's what average you have in school. It stands for grade point average. Very true. Taylor? For sure. Like it stands you know, for the work you've put in school. But let's think about this on a broader topic. Studies show that people who sleep more have higher GPA. <laughs> and that's, I mean, and, and any, any statistic that I've learned out today or any fact, uh, if you want to come back to me and I'll, I'll cite it for you and the studies. But frankly, like, that's, that is a huge part of a student's GPA is the amount of sleep they get. So does GPA just measure grades? No. It's called a grade point average, but if anything, it should be a life point average, an LPA. Because it measures so many other things. Moving, moving on now, uh, eating well, exercising. What, what do these things do? Any <laughs> fitness buffs in the house? Here we go, Spencer. Uh, well, eating well and exercising—that's a uh, 
it's a good course uh, when you're, you're well being and health. I mean, if you're not healthy, you're not going to be able to perform to the level that you need to be successful. Give me an example of a performance attribute that's poor for a student that's affected by nutrition. Well, if you're eating sugar and a bunch of crap um, all the time, you actually will not be able to perform mentally as well as a true dehydrated <coughs> and a it's fuel. Yeah. It's, uh, it's that, that energy ready to your all your activities that you have to accomplish your experience. Exactly. Perfect, thank you. Uh, and that is it is really important, guys. Uh, you have to ask yourself these basic questions. You know, what's your sugar intake, especially here in, in America, where we love our sugar, we put it in everything. You have to ask yourself <coughs> when I eat calories. Do I match that with fiber so that those calories go to where it needs to be? It's very, very important questions. Very, very important for your mental capacity, your capacity to stay alert, your capacity to sleep well, to get what you need out of your sleep. It's essential and it's extra credit and it would affect your GPA. Uh, moving on now to extracurriculars. Who here, uh, is, is, any, is anyone here, and I don't want to like single anyone out, um, but is anyone here not involved in an extracurricular right now? The fact that we're here at this time conference is a pretty good indicator that we're pretty engaged students. So first off, kudos to you guys. You are now part of a statistic that will generally generate a higher GPA just because that is, that is the rule of thumb. We do, as, as more engaged students, have a better shot at getting better grades. And it's a cool thing to be a part of. Oops. Not bad. And so to, to continue on that, to, to spread the message here, now that we're in our extracurriculars, what is it we should be doing for other students in order to increase our health PA? Getting them to follow the same cycle. Awesome, awesome. Perfect. Anyone else? Who here got the student government? Because, or not student government, sorry, a different presentation. Who here got into extracurriculars because there was a personal outreach to them? It's a pretty good indicator. Dustin talked about we need to reach out, and although that's not the only means by which someone gets involved, sometimes students see stuff in the halls, signs, uh, or just see us being active and, and have that proactive attitude, we do sharing the wealth. We really, really do. And uh, I've seen a lot of you guys working around this year. I've seen you doing that, so you should be proud of yourselves. But really, um, to enforce that idea, the importance of extracurriculars, as we go through our duties, I encourage you all to share the wealth, pass the buck, pass stuff like that. So, what you basically just begin with is the summary of my last presentation that I gave two years ago. Uh, the plan was, as I was retooling it, was to do it basically the same way uh, and just kind of up the ante a bit. Just because it has been two years, uh, I've learned a lot more. These principles have been more uh, concreted into my life, into my, op my access as a student leader, and I was going to go off these. But as I was doing this presentation, guys, I was just feeling so wrong about it. And it's not necessarily that these aren't bad principles. They are very important principles. I hope that you all take advantage of them. But I felt like two years later, there was something different I needed to share. And going into the extracurricular side of things is I wanted to give you guys the extra credit of student leadership. Because really, in the last two years, that's where my growth has been. So I'm going to give you guys a quiz. If you please take out your little, beautiful science conference books provided so generously by the Woodbury School of Business, of which I have a major. Woodbury, that's why. I'm going to give you guys a quiz. Now, this is completely and utterly up to you personally. Uh, you do not have to show this to anyone. I will not be asking anyone to share if they would not like to. Uh, we will be sharing a couple things, but only if you're comfortable. Uh, this is just for you. The questions I'm going to pose to you, and we're going to spend the majority of this time on, are the questions that I have learned personally are the extra credit questions of student leadership. 
Now, when you get to become a student leader, you have the main question of the, the test of student leadership, as it were. You have, uh, you know, is your grade point average up? Are you willing to obey these rules? Are you willing to, to go by these guide guidelines, attend these events, do these certain things? Though that's the test. What I'm about to give you are the extra credit questions. I ask you that you write them down. We'll discuss them as we go through. Um, but they are pretty deep, and some of them are rather hard hitting. Uh, I also want to give the disclaimer that I do not feel that I am very proficient in these. There is a lot of areas that I can work on with this. But two years later down the road, these are the questions that give you the extra credit of student leadership. So, here we go. <coughs> After an event, are you staying to help clean up? Cleaning up is your favorite part of an event, and you're insane. <laughs> you should you should use up tech. No. Seems like a pretty remedial question. Does anyone want to take a stab at why I ask it? Just shows how dedicated you are for the position. You're there for the benefits, or you're there because it's something that you're passionate about. Perfect. So the judge is very awesome. Who else? Maybe to help show your appreciation for those that are there and helping them get out that much faster. Yeah, as a sign of gratitude, I think that's a great example. Uh, to sort of show our, our, our thankfulness for the people who plan the event. Yeah, so just like, it's like not that you're staying help clean up so that people recognize that you're staying help clean up, but it looks good on you. Like it looks good that you care enough to stay after rather than just like leaving after. You know what I mean? No, that's perfect I, as a judge of character. That's what I was going to say, like it kind of shows off her character, so she answered it, or she said it. Perfect. I think it also shows how much you view yourself as part of the team. Yeah, one, the, the, the unity aspect, for sure. I'll tell you this much. I've been around for a long, long time. And if you look at the student leaders now on campus, especially the ones that you identify as professional, Two years ago, <clears throat> those same students were the ones I saw sweeping the floors, picking up the trash, putting away equipment. Ten times out of ten, guys. It's unreal. And if you want to be one of those student leaders in two years, stay and clean up after events. I promise you. It's, it's a weird judge of, of a leader's ability, but honestly, when we talked about the unity, building the character, uh, the, the the sacrifice that it takes, man, that's what you want in the leader, right? Perfect. Moving on. When someone tells you they don't like your idea, do you get offended? Fire process. It really, really does. 
Why is it so important that we not be offended when something like this happens? The way I see it is that everyone has different viewpoints and it's important to keep all those in mind, especially as a student leader. Like that was really hard for me at first because I was like, oh, I have some pretty like bomb ideas. But then I'm like, okay, well maybe someone else has a better idea than me and I should keep I should keep that into consideration. I think it shows what you're in it for. Like if you if you get offended, it probably shows you're more in it for you than you are in it for those that you're serving. And you get to refine and to grow, and sometimes, you know, babies are ugly, and someone needs to tell your babies that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's basically, you know, you, you just can't grow. You just take offense to everything. Now, there are times to be offended, um, but it's not at this time of year in a leadership position. For sure. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, oh, Taylor, sorry. Taylor, Tyler, well, blondes, and next week. Um, I've, I find a lot of times when ideas get shut down, it's because someone broke on the idea. So it's not necessarily the idea itself to be shut down, it's the idea that's been better because someone else's input was involved. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's again, our, our idea was so perfect, there's no way that any addition or, or change can make it better. Been there. This is okay. You guys can ask my peripheries are a little off today, sorry. Anyone else? You stand to lose a lot if you feel like uh, an adjustment to an idea you're proposing is, is equitable to an attack on your character, your personality, or you as an individual. It's not. In fact, it's, it's very, very beneficial. The fact, and you should be seeing these as the fact that any, uh, any addition to these ideas is, is a compliment. That someone would see your base idea as something that we should move forward with. Uh, I see this a lot. I go through this a lot. I am still not perfect at this because when I have my my golden goose egg and it gets cracked, I'm like, oh, it's not perfect anymore. But honestly, I can also say with confidence that there have been many times before where that goose egg has gotten cracked and we've made beautiful scrambled eggs out of it. It's terrible enough. <laughs> <laughs> happens all the time. Moving on. You find yourself doing the jobs that no one else wants to do. We talked about this a little bit with, with cleanup after the event, but that's a, that's a very general one. We all have events we all have to clean up after them, but every single organization that I've seen at UVU, and I bet that that's the same anywhere you go, has those jobs that no one wants to do. Am I right? Yep. I see a lot of nods from a lot of different organizations, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. Um, the majority of my student leadership experiences come from the ambassador program here, which is our student recruitment. And I'll tell you what, information cards are the bane of my existence. I heard they got rid of them in a more automated system now, which makes it so BLS. But what would happen is, um, you'd go out to an event, or you'd go out of state to a conference, and you'd just run around and you'd talk to students and say, hey, can you do you, can you do you, can you do you? And the action that we wanted them to perform with that was to fill out an information card, which just basically said, you know, name, contact information, the year they're planning on entering school, what major they'd like to go into, what extracurriculars they're interested in, and honestly, like, that was so much fun. And I would take a recruiting job at the drop of a hat after I graduated, just because I do love that, I love being with people. But then, you'd feel so great, and you'd have this stack of cards that you'd bring home, and you'd put it down on the, the advisor's table and you say, there, we got that. And they'd be like, great, put it in the system. <sighs> Excitement level goes way down. And you sit at a computer for hours and you just monotonously type this information in. It was awful. It was awful. 
worse than Kabul. But the ambassadors who would do that and would do it with a smile and would do it at the drop of the hat are the ambassadors right now who are in leadership. It's the weirdest thing. Does anyone want to, want to throw out a, a job from their organization that people don't want to do normally? <coughs> what is it normally doing? Uh, what's the job no one wants to do normally? Uh, <laughs> the event. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I am admittedly a terrible event planner. Do you love going to the Oh, Was anyone at Carnival yesterday? Oh, man. Anyone else? Mentors? Orientation. No one wants to send me emails. Mm. And <laughs> I, I have sent probably 300 emails in a day. No one wants to do it, but I'll, I'll do it. Cody's one of the best leaders on campus, guys. So pay attention to that. I mean it. Dylan, what's one you you say that no one wants to do? <laughs> Clean the publicity room. Oh, yeah. So, if, if anyone who's familiar with the UDUSA office, or who isn't, who hasn't been there before, so there's this big room that we use uh, to, to sort of plan our events, and it's our publicity room. And when activities and they're planning the event, it's so jovial and fun and nice. And not just activities, but any organization. And then uh, when said uh, branch leaves, it's a mess and someone has to clean it up. Not fun. Not fun at all. But again, like my advice to you is to search for those. Be active. Look for these things in your organizations. And do them. Because when we look at it, it's really that hard to send a couple emails. It's really that hard to clean the publicity room. It's really that hard to fill out a card. No, it's not. It's monotonous. It can't be boring. But this is the world of leadership, guys. You know, it, it can be exciting, but 95% of the leaders' work is doing that stuff that no one wants to do, just so that you can provide for them. Next question. Do you love the people you work with? And what does that mean? I love what you do and I love what you do for our 
our own organization. I don't think we have to love everything about the person because we don't know everything about the person. But we can still love, we can still love what they do. And I would say, though, that, that that emotion being the center point of this, you know, that love just tends to be, and it sounds cheesy, but it seems to be sort of an all purpose cure for any animosity or negativity that can come from the culture of the organization. Uh, and that can translate to, to basically anything. Moving on. When was the last time you served? And when you answer this, I want you to pinpoint it. It could have been last week, it could have been yesterday, it could have been this morning. Uh, it could have been anyone. It could have been a fellow student, it could have been your mom, it could have been your daughter. When was the last time you served? Service is probably the biggest point of student leader extra credit out there because it ties so much into what we've already talked about. We've, we've brought it up quite a bit already in many different things, but I do feel like it's necessary to bring it into the broader topic. Service is essential. If you are not serving as a student leader, start serving or stop leading, period. It's so intrinsically important to you, not only the ability of your organization to perform, but for you as a leader to perform. And once you have stopped serving, you can't necessarily lead anymore, at least lead well. Uh, and that's something I've seen throughout. I've seen leaders on this campus stop serving, and they don't last much longer after that. They tend to go away. And it's a hard thing to say, it's a hard thing to have to go through, but that is the truth. If you're interested in high levels of leadership, never stop serving. And I don't, I don't want any, I mean, obviously it's because something you said, I don't want anyone bringing up any names, I don't want to bring up any hints, I want this to be completely personal. Do you hate anyone? Anyone? The old adage goes that hate is a strong word, which it is. something we should keep track of, obviously. Have you ever told anyone, I hate you? You verbalized that and said that about him. You said a name. I hate so-and-so. Hate them. Just as important as service is to the good of a leader is hate detrimental and dangerous and deadly to you as a student leader. Speaking as someone who has been on both sides of the spectrum with this, I can tell you right now, the more you hate, the less ability you have. <clears throat> Sometimes that hate or that dislike may be justified. Maybe, maybe you have been wronged. Maybe someone treated you badly. And on a personal level, it will be understandable. But we're not here on a personal level. This isn't the, the spam conference, the student personal and mentor. It's a slam conference, the student leadership and mentoring. We are leaders. And regardless of how justified we may be and the, the faults that we feel, we do not get to hate other people. You can't, you can't afford it. You have too many people depending on you right now to allow yourself to feel that negative emotion about anyone, about any other organization, about any other club, about a faculty member or an administrator. You sever a blind with someone, so many more people are affected by that than you can ever imagine. Any thoughts before we move on? Thank <laughs> you. 
When was the last time you spoke poorly about someone behind their back? Why did you sacrifice it? Who is it to? Why did they need it? What came of it? Turning that back around. What was the last thing that was sacrificed to you? What did it mean to you? What came of it? How do you think that person? Just a thought. Thoughts on sacrifice. We'll speed up a bit just for the sake of time. I just want to give an example of the most that um, I had a kind of like a down mood. I, I woke up and I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to go anywhere and everything kind of fell apart. And um, it really just been. You know what, I'm going to miss the rest of my process so we can spend this time together and, you know, talk and just to make you feel better. It's a simple thing. He said he sacrificed his time and his process too because he saw that I had a down mood, you know, and he like he wanted to cheer me up. So it's a simple thing, but it means a lot. Let's uh, spend our spec relationship goals around <laughs> Perfect. What were the last kind of words that you directly said to someone? Uh, Trevor also just gave a really awesome uh, ad address presentation if you guys were in there. And it was, there was a second, I didn't go to all of it, but there was a really cool section on the power 
of uh, kind words, and it was a really amazing TED talk as well. Uh, and just it just kind of highlighted that idea, you know, the power of small, simple words, even. And we hear about simple acts of kindness all the time, especially in Utah with the connection with Christianity. Simple acts of kindness, it's, it's great, but just even simple words, things that don't even really require that much sacrifice, genuine compliments. Do you remember the last words you said to someone that were kind? Genuine? Turning this around, you remember the last genuine words that were said to you that were kind? Who will please the court? I'd like to tell you all a little story of uh, this freshman here from the UV Review. And uh, this night was our opening night. A couple hours before that picture was taken, that freshman was very, very disenfranchised to the idea of higher education. He had gone through a semester that was not particularly successful. He'd taken a lot of parts of classes, but just didn't thrive in the classroom setting, had a very hard time paying attention, had a very hard time getting the motivation to a class, didn't get amazing grades, even though it was something he felt like he excelled. He was ready to give up. He was decided to go on this two-year mission, come home and work. His whole family had done it, so why couldn't he? He went into the backstage of the Reagan Theater. He opened his locker, and this was just sitting on the top shelf. Phil, you you are magic to take a role like Beryl, as far as playing, and make him so dimensional, funny, quirky, completely wonderful. That takes talent you have it in spades, my friend. Thank you for all you've given Break a Lake. Dave. Dave Tinney was a our director, who was a professor here at the time. The man's amazing. If you know anything about theater in Utah, you know the name David Tinker. At least you should. Because this guy has done amazing things. He's on the board of the House and the Theater on Rose Valley. Uh, as he was our artist in residence here, he led us to two consecutive wins at the Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival. Uh, he directed the show Chess that got me here. He's an amazing man. Every single person who comes into contact with him looks up to him. And rightfully so. He's as humble as I'll get out. It was those words from a man that I loved and thought was so amazing that kept me here. I would not be talking to you. I don't think I'd be talking to anyone in the public setting, to be honest. And word for what Dave said right there. The power of words, guys. It did not take Dave a long time to write those. Mm -hmm. Penmanship is terrible, so we did it pretty quickly. <laughs> I went back to him afterwards and he just said in his most genuine tone that he meant every word. <laughs> and made all the difference, guys. Say nice things to the people you lead. You have no idea how much they need to hear it. Another mentor, a friend of mine, unfortunately isn't here anymore, he was the Associate Vice President of the Recruitment and Outreach, Kirk Young, said this to me and Charlie in one of our classes, probably the best class period that I've ever had in my life. It was a leadership class, and we were just meant to go over the textbook, and then he just dropped the book and said, listen, guys, I need to share some things with you. He talked about the state of the world, what was happening right now, and why things look so bleak, and why it was because leadership was at such a loss. And he turned to us, and in this, this fit of passion said, there is enough bad in the world for good people like us to just sit on their hands would be a crime in and of itself. That's so true, guys. The world needs more extra credit in leadership. There it does. You open up a 
any news article outline, you read these headlines. It's tragic. It's disgusting. It's terrible. It's not to say that there isn't good in the world, but right now, when it comes to leaders, things aren't looking so hot. And I think that's something we can all agree on. I consider you all to be part of the good people in this world. So please do yourselves a favor. Do the favor to your constituency, your friends, to not sit on your hands, to get up and do something. Get that extra credit. These were questions that I just thought of. They, they come from my experience. I stand by them. But that's not the only thing you can do. Just go out there. Do good. Be active. Do more of what you love, Kylie. Close. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be astounded at what it is. Not just for others, but for yourself. Because life is a test. The life point average, your LPA, will go up because extra credit does that. Does anyone have any questions for me? Okay. What would you tell freshman Phil and others that are in that boat as from your experience? What would you tell them? Honestly, there's no there's no more perfect words than this. It was exactly what I needed to hear. It came in from the time it was. When I ever see a student who is struggling, or who I may interpret may be struggling, I try to throw them the most genuine, kind compliments I can. I don't try to sugarcoat it. I don't try to say things disingenuous. But there is, the, there is enough good for every student in the school to fit on a card like this. And there's enough genuine attitude in every single one of us to be able to supply that. So that's, I mean, that's, I mean, and when I think about what I could say, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have even come close to something like that. And I know I don't try to even, you know, relate to be as, being as good as Dave, but if anything, uh, the position I'm in right now, and the duty that we all have as leaders, sort of gives us that, that, that genuine, that, 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 that prestige across campus, and that's something that we turn around to back to students. <clears throat> Any other questions? All right, you guys have been amazing. Thank you so much. It's been a great presentation. I really appreciate it.